Thank you everyone for joining us today. This is the Levittown Public Library and we are here today with Kimberly for Posture Alignment. Go ahead, Kim. That was quick to the point, just how I like to be. Welcome everybody. Everybody that I see, you've been with me before. I don't really have to go over too much crazy stuff, but anybody who's new, today we're gonna to be using a pillow off of your bed or if you got yoga blocks, great, use those. If you do take a pillow off of your bed, you're gonna fold it in half because this has an awful lot of resistance. I cannot compress it. So you wanna have something that's got a lot of resistance to so fold your pillow in half if you're going to use that. I'm gonna dig into some of the old stuff, which means the routine is gonna be a little challenging. This is old style. So we're gonna add some challenge factors. <laughs> if you cannot get on the floor, I will give you my, if you can get on the floor, we're gonna start with some ab crunches in that specific style that you guys like so much. Again, if you can't get on the floor, I'm gonna give you a modification. You can definitely do this sitting in a chair. It's not gonna be as difficult for the upper part, but it will be as difficult for the bottom, if not more. So you're just gonna sit in a chair and you're gonna put a block between your knees and you're just gonna start lifting your legs up. If that is not possible, you're just gonna lift your heels up. Everybody else who's coming to the floor with me, we are going to start straight out with these double-double crunches. I'm gonna put the block right between your knees and you're gonna lay on the floor. Now I'm gonna cue you guys, those of you who are on the floor, remember how this style goes. So you want to keep the upper body as extended as you can. So we're gonna keep the hands behind the head and draw the elbows back and down. Everybody who's sitting down in a chair, clearly you're not gonna do this. You're just gonna sit with the block between your knees. So when we do our lift and we crunch, I want you to find a spot on the ceiling behind you at 45 degrees. Do not lose that spot with your eyes. I want you to really pay attention to that. So you're gonna keep the elbows back and down. I'm gonna crunch the upper body up, keeping it as flat as possible. So keep it in that same line that it is when it's on the floor. Same time, your feet are gonna come up off the floor. So it's this, polar opposite going on between your bottom half and your upper half. And we're keeping that block between your knees so both sides of your hips can work at the same time. And this is very challenging. However, as challenging as this may be, you've got to listen to your body. So if something, even during this exercise or any exercise that I give you or any exercise anybody gives you, if something does not feel right, if you feel quote unquote, the bad pain, you've got to stop and you've got to modify or just stop completely. I'm gonna go for a million of these, about 20. So I'm still keeping my eye on the ceiling behind me. Notice this is not like the, the term crunch actually says, we're not rounding forward. This is a different style. So we want to train the abdominals to be what they're designed to be. We wanna train them to be the torso flexors that they're supposed to be, but they're not supposed to be torso flexors if they can't do it while not keeping the shoulders back and down. So they should be able to do that. But most of us, our bodies have forgotten how to do that. So that's why this is so challenging to do. We're used to rounding up and using the shoulders and throwing our weight into it. This is extremely challenging to do because we're asking the rest of the body to be an extension while we pull into flexion just a little bit. Just a couple more, everybody. I know right off the bat, we're starting out with some tough stuff. Like I said, this is an older recipe, older recipe for alignment. Okay, take that block out. We're gonna do hip crossover stretch. I will give you a modification if you can't do this laying on the floor. So hip crossover stretch, nice, easy one. We started off with hard, now we're heading towards the easy. You're gonna bring the arms out to the sides, go palms face down. And I'm laying in what I call the hook lying position. So the knees are bent. I'm gonna cross my right ankle to my left knee. I'm gonna twist my lower half so my legs fall kind of like a windshield wiper, nice and slow because you wanna keep your form. And if you can touch the floor, fantastic. I want you to take your face and look in the opposite direction of your twist. And we're gonna hang out here. I want you to keep the knee pointed towards the ceiling. So keep doing work in the hip to do that. If you're sitting in a chair and you can't get on the floor with me today, this is just you. You're gonna sit in the chair. I'm gonna twist your upper body in one direction. You're only holding for about a minute on each side. So it's not a big deal if you can't get on the floor.
being that this is an old recipe, we're going to see some pretty challenging moves today. We're going to do the sitting floor twist. I think we got some sitting floor arm circles coming up too. It's not easy, but there are modifications. We can't have everything be easy. I'm not feeding you ice cream and cake all day long. You're going to get your spinach. You're going to get your Brussels sprouts. Okay, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm just going to show you a different angle. So now I'm going to cross my left ankle to my right knee. Notice my feet don't slide. You got to really keep that in mind. You want to keep the form that you started with. Ankle to knee and twist. Another minute. This can be difficult for some of you to go palms face down on the floor. So if you notice that twisting is coming more from the elbow, meaning like the radius and the ulna, the lower part of the arm is doing the twisting, rather than it engaging your shoulder, then you might want to flip the palms up for this one. Your shoulder isn't ready for it yet. But either way, I'm still working to draw my top knee towards the ceiling. I want to point my knee to the ceiling. It's a lot of work here in the hip, so we're asking an outward rotation of the hip. Fantastic. I'm going to come out of this and do a harder version of this twist. Again, if you guys cannot get on the floor, you're going to be doing this in the chair again, and you'll just do double worth. No problem. We're going to do sitting floor twist. This one's tough because it's got so many different components in it. I am sitting on the floor. Okay, well, the legs are going to be straight out. It's like Dandasana pose in yoga, right? Our staff pose where the body is shaped like an L. But now we're going to add the components. I'm going to bring my right knee in towards my chest. And if I can, I'm going to cross the leg over. Now from the front, it's going to look like this. So I can do this. But obviously, if you're seven months pregnant, some stuff is going to be in the way. So you can't get that done. You might end up here. And that's OK. But what I don't want you to do is use your arms to come through the twist. We want to engage the hips and the back to do this twist. Let the arms fall where they're going to fall. So I'm going to leave my left leg out straight. My right leg crosses over. To the best of my ability, I'm gonna to try to sit upright. So I'm gonna put a little curve into my lower back. This is the hard part, to sit upright from the hips. Now I'm gonna twist my torso in the direction of my bent knee. Again, I'm not using my arms to pull myself through. I wanna use the hips in the back. And we're gonna hold this for one minute. I'm placing my hand behind me, just as a little bit of a, a balancer and a little bit of support. But if I take my hand away, I'm still in the same position. So if you notice that you take your hand away and you fall back, this move is a little bit too tough for you. So it's okay to sit in a chair and get it done, just like I explained before. So we're just sitting in a chair, sitting as upright as you can. Just twist your body in one, one direction. I want you guys to pay attention to the leg that's on the floor, nice and straight. Tighten your thigh and pull your ankle into dorsiflexion. So it's like you're pushing your heel away while you pull your toes towards you. What's going on with the, the knee that's bent, if you focus on your hip, I want you to draw your knee in towards your body, but not using your hands. So while we sit here, I'm not using my elbow to pull through. Again, I'm using my hip. Fantastic, I'm gonna switch to the other side. Do you feel how challenging that was? Very challenging move. Okay, we're gonna do a minute, same thing, other side. So I'm leaving my right leg straight out. I'm gonna pull my left leg in. If I can, I'll cross it over. Right leg nice and straight, engaged. Sit upright and twist. This hip does not wanna work. This leg is like bleh, falling out. So I just use my hand to pull the leg in position and then see if I can actually hold it there, and I can. So, all right, I'll sit there. Testing myself, I'm taking my hand away, still able to sit upright. It's a tough move. 
Make sure your leg that's straight on the floor stays straight. Thigh is tight. It's like pushing the back of your knee into the floor. Keep sitting upright from your hips. So it's less work from your back, more work from your hip. But if this is the first time you've ever done this, it's probably gonna be a flip-flop between the two and your back is probably gonna take over more than your hips, but it'll learn. Great, come on out. We're gonna do cats and dogs next. If you wanna do this in your chair, same thing. You're just sitting there, arching the back and rounding back and forth. That's all it is. But I'm gonna take this onto the floor so I can load my hips and load my shoulders. Anybody with wrist issues, there's a nice Band-Aid for that. You could take your fist onto the floor so that there's no bend in your wrist. Otherwise, you're gonna take it to the chair and modify. Nice. You get to see some of you doing your work. You're looking great. Make sure the head follows everybody. Head's following. We're gonna do arm circles next. Now you can do arm circles sitting on the floor. You can do them standing, you can do them kneeling. I'm gonna do sitting floor arm circles. So it's probably the hardest version of arm circles that you can do. If arm circles hurt you today, you can just roll your shoulders. You'll go maybe 15 in one direction, 15 in the other direction and just go back and forth. Otherwise, everybody else who's doing arm circles with me, let me show you. <laughs> Good, I see you guys doing it already. You're gonna take your hands to that modified golf grip. Looks like this. It's open fists. But like I said, I'm gonna do this in the sitting floor position, the hardest one there is. So I take my leg straight out in front of me like that last move. Put a curve in my lower back so I'm sitting up straight from my pelvis, bringing my arms up. <laughs> Stay away from the wall. Bringing my arms out and circle. I'm going to go 40 forward and 40 backward. Thumbs are down, thumbs point forward. Whichever direction your thumbs point, that's the direction that you circle. I'm going to circle backwards now, everybody. So remember. Palms go up, thumbs point back. So I'm gonna circle up and back now. I'm gonna keep my position so I'm not gonna slouch back. I'm gonna keep sitting upright. Remember, we're getting this move to originate from your hips. That's where you want it to hold. It's not necessarily a back exercise. This is a hip exercise. Keep your thighs tight, ankles dorsiflexed, even if you're sitting and rolling your shoulders. Wonderful, I'm gonna take it down into the frog position. I'm gonna work on some pullovers from there. Let me just move this back. Okay. So if you can't get on the floor, you can definitely do frog sitting in a chair. Soles of the feet come together and the knees fall out to the sides. I'm gonna hang out here for a minute or so. And then we're gonna add some work afterwards. I do have my heels pulled in pretty tight. So they're as close as my butt to my butt as I can get them. I'm only saying that because some people can get really lazy on that. Not everybody, just people who aren't focused. You wanna try to pull your heels in as close as you can to your butt and then let the legs swap out. Lovely. I'm going to take it into pullovers now. We're going to do some arm, I'll call them arm openers. Why not? I'm going to do a routine here with the arms. So arms straight up towards the sky, interlace your fingers, keep the elbows straight, everyone. 
it's so tough to keep the elbow straight, especially if you have a shoulder that's not cooperating. An uncooperative shoulder is going to request that the elbow bends. And you might not even know it. You're like, oh, yeah, look, I'm hitting the floor. I want you to lock out your elbows when you can see them. Keep them there and go back slowly while you focus on your elbows being nice and straight. And you might notice, hmm, I'm not quite getting so far. But if you bend your elbows, that's a cheat. And we're not able to recruit the shoulder in the back. So we can't retrain it if you keep cheating. I want you to keep them nice and straight. Okay. So you can do this in a chair, sitting in a chair. It's not going to be the most comfortable. You're going to be pulling your hands overhead and you're going to be working against gravity. But it can be done. I'm going to take you to the hook line position, everybody. Hook line position it is. I'm going to stay here in the hook line position. I'm going to do some goal posts. So I'm just going to show you, if you were looking at me bird's eye view, my arms would start out here. And I'm going to rotate through my shoulders, drop the backs of my hands towards the floor, bring the palms towards the floor. Notice my hands stay the same distance from my body as I go through this movement. 90 degree bend in your elbows, friends. There's a tendency here for your elbows to walk closer and closer towards your body. So I really want you to pay attention to that. You can do this sitting in a chair. You could put your back up against the wall and get it done. I don't care what position your legs are in. So we're working through the arms. Can you do this with the legs in frog position? Yes. Can you do the legs with legs up the wall? Mm-hmm. Static back. Yep. So many different leg positions. I just picked this one. We are going to go back into the hips, but before we do, I wanna give myself a little functional test and see what these goalposts did for my pullovers, for overhead extension. So I'm gonna go back to my pullovers, have to compare apples with apples, so I'm gonna put my legs back in frog position, and I'm just gonna see, does anything feel different? Oh, my arm feels a lot looser. Doesn't feel as restrained. That's what we're looking for, what's different? What's different? Okay. I'm going to get you guys into isolated femur rotations. When we do these, you can do them in multiple different positions. Heck, you could do them with a cow. You could do them with a fox. You could do them in a box. I'm gonna put one leg in the bent knee position. The other leg is the one we're gonna be working on. So I'm gonna keep that leg nice and straight, just like that other move that we did that was so tough. We're gonna to rotate the leg in and out, but we're gonna do it from the hip. So the rest of the leg must be nice and straight. But while you lay there or sit there, see, I can do this if I'm sitting in a chair, you want to keep the feet in line with your hips. So I don't want the leg too wide or too narrow. In line. I'm going to lay back on the floor. My leg is nice and straight. Thigh is tight. Ankles dorsiflex. From the hip, I even place my hand on my hip to remind myself I only want to move from the hip. So my entire leg is rotating in and out. My foot looks like a windshield wiper. Because these old routines are, are pretty short, I'm throwing in a few other exercises that I know are going to help with this routine to make it a little longer because we have an hour together. A lot of the routines to help different postural dysfunctions, switch, are usually, eh, let's say 20 minutes long at most. Sometimes they're even shorter. And yes, you could do a whole posture routine for an entire hour. And that's what you guys do when you're with me. Actually, you do kind of a therapy first, 
then I give you something hard, something more of a workout. And that doesn't mean it's not therapy too, but it's just a little descriptive term. Remember, you wanna move only from your hip. You don't wanna be moving from your ankle. So even if you've done this before, I want you to make sure your ankle is very still. Even if you have to pick your face up and double check, oh gee, I was moving my ankle at the very ends of each movement. Keep it still, only the hip switch. This is one of my favorite moves. In fact, I need to do it more often. We are still human, so we do give ourselves excuses as to why we don't do the things that we know that we should do. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I should do this way more often. Switch again. <clears throat> I know what muscles are supposed to be working to get this job done. And just now, as I was feeling around my hip to see what's actually going on, because I can't feel that outward rotation, it's supposed to be the glute, gluteus medius, the stuff around here doing it. I don't feel it turning on at all. So I just started changing my move a little bit, wondering if, gee, Kim, could you give it a little bit more effort? And I gave it a little more effort and finally it almost turned into a glute squeeze. So that might be something that could help you. Switch, last time. So as we rotate in, you should feel the tensor fascia latte reveal itself as you turn in. It's a very superficial muscle. So that means it's very close to the skin. You should be able to feel it turn on right where your jeans front pocket would be. But as we externally rotate, Different muscles are responsible for that. So we're looking for outside and back here, the glutes. I'm wondering what the heck was I using before when nothing was going on? <laughs> Interesting. I wonder what this is gonna feel like when I stand up, switch. What was I using? Something's telling me we could do a little transverse plane action. There's three different planes that we use in three dimensions to describe the movements of the body. The transverse plane is the one that involves this cross rotational thing. So I'm gonna throw you guys into, let's do cross crawl. Even though that, it actually doesn't involve any rotation, but the cross crawl is something that you can do either laying on the floor, you could even do it standing up. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like standing up. Everybody else, you're gonna lay on the floor. So when you lay on the floor or stand up, you're here. Opposite arm, the opposite leg. I'm gonna get this done on the floor. When you do this move, I want you to pay attention to your elbow being straight. I want you to also pay attention to drawing your knees straight up in line with your hip towards your chest. So it truly isn't transverse planar movement. We are walking, working in this cross patterning for the muscles that are responsible for a transplanar movement. Interesting, right? Never heard me use that term before, transplanar. <laughs> Transverse planar movement. When you pull your knee towards your chest, try to keep your ankle dorsiflex, and it's similar to what we do when we do ankle circles point flexes. So don't let your heel drop to your butt. If you keep your shin parallel to the floor, it's gonna work your hip in a different way. That's what we want. What we're doing is mimicking walking. 
And after I do femur rotations, I always find this so helpful. So every time I do that, my mind immediately goes to, hey, hey, do this move. So helpful. We're gonna stand up after this. We're gonna do something we haven't done in a while, gluteal contractions. Where did those go? <laughs> Where did those go? We're gonna do them standing though. Okay. So standing gluteal contractions, we are gonna do them in two different leg, leg positions. Some of you might not even be able to get any glute contraction at all when you do this. You might be all belly. So if you are all belly when you do gluteal contractions, we're just gonna change the position of your legs or your hips rather. So I'm gonna start off with my feet facing straight ahead. Think about, about the distance of your fists between your big toes, a little bit bigger than that. And all we're gonna do is squeeze your butt cheeks together and let them go over and over. If you've never done this before, I want you to double check that you're not using your belly. So jam your fingers into your stomach and make sure you're not squeezing your abdominals over and over. If you feel that happening, I want you to put your hand on your butt cheeks and see, hmm, is this muscle contracting or is it here? So if you notice that you're not getting any butt contraction at all, we're gonna give it a little bit of a Band-Aid. I'm gonna outwardly rotate from both of your hips and you'll probably feel that get a lot stronger. Either way, we're gonna go back and forth between these two leg positions. We'll do about 20 in each or so, or whenever I call out switch. <laughs> I have a hard time unwinding my glute from my thigh. So sometimes when I do this, I'm tightening my thigh in conjunction with my glute. So I'm trying my best to use my conscious mind to shut off the thigh, but it never works because there's a pattern going on here that needs to unwind. You might be having something similar. It's not gonna kill you. I'll switch again so my feet are straight. It's not gonna kill you, but it will change itself the more reps you give it. And as you do these gluteal contractions, you might feel your thighs are rotating outward. That doesn't necessarily mean you're engaging your thighs. But just like I said before, that external rotation, these muscles are what's involved in doing that. The muscles right on the outside of your hips here to pull your joint in that external rotated position. I'm gonna come back to the feet everted and continue again, squeeze, release. I don't want you to bend your knees, but it might be helpful if you give a little, a slight bend in your knees and just check it out. So I've been getting creative like that because I know this thigh loves to overwork for my glute. So I've put a slight bend in my knees, kind of shuts off the quad and then my glute fires in a different way. That might be helpful for you. Just be creative like me and check things out. If your intuition is saying, hey, try this, go for it. You might find something that's extremely helpful for you and maybe you'll share it with me and I'll be able to share it with other people too. Come back to straight again, please. Making sure it's just my butt. Mm hmm Okay, so turn the feet out again, everting, external rotation. We're still doing gluteal contractions, on, off, on, off. Oh, another caveat. When I used to go through these, I would go speedily and I wouldn't give my glute the chance to fully relax. So it would be on and my off would be kind of eh, letting go 50% and then turning it back on again. So that was actually, <laughs> it was putting me in a funny position and my body wasn't responding as well as it could have if I slowed it down and did a full retraction and then a release. So if that's happening to you or that sounds like you, turn your feet straight one more time, then maybe you want to check that out, slow it down, 
and try to get a nice contraction, but also a full release, full release. Yeah, this standing one's really weird for me today is doing this flip flop between thigh, butt, thigh, butt. Very strange. I might have to do these again later in the hook line position because I can't tell my quad to stop doing the work. So when I bend the leg and lay down, they're much better and more isolated into my butt. So just some food for thought if that might be happening to you. We're gonna do standing overhead extension. We're gonna hold it for a minute. This one's not an easy one. I'm gonna to turn to the side because I don't want you guys to do something like this. This movement is based on standing straight and erect not consciously, just kind of being there and asking the shoulders to come into overhead extension, not asking for your pelvis to bail forward and your back to come into extension really is what I'm looking for is your shoulders. So I want you to really pay attention to that. I'm gonna interlace my hands and press my palms away from me, elbows stay straight. So it's very similar to that pullover move that we do on the floor. Elbows stay straight, then start the work. When you hit that point of, oh, it's getting tight, you're probably gonna start cheating and bending an elbow. So I want you to hang out there and focus on keeping your elbows straight and only moving from the shoulders. This move is really frustrating for me because I know it looks like crap. I used to have pictures of me with my arms straight up overhead. And my left shoulder is no longer cooperating and it's such a source of frustration. I just want somebody to grab it and jam it back. <laughs> then I'd probably end up in the hospital. <laughs> so don't do that, everybody. But I am just relaying to you how frustrating it can be when you've got joints and muscles and parts of your body that just don't work the same way that they used to. But you know what? It's okay. The body's going to be compensating to some degree, and we will move on. You might end up finding your solution through some of these exercises or getting 50% better, 30% better. Anything is good. But Frustration, I get it, guys, I get it. Oh, let's do that. I'm looking through the old stuff. All right, we're gonna do some old stuff. That's a good one. All right, I'm gonna take you guys back down to the floor. We're gonna do reverse skydiver. We might even use the block too. If you can't get down onto the floor with me, those of you who can't do that, you're just gonna place your hands on the wall in fact, forget that. You're going to put your fists on the wall, just like this. Remember the goalpost position that we did? You're going to put your fists on the wall is what you're going to do. And you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together, and you're going to do some pelvic tilts while you do that. Everybody else, I'm going to take you onto the floor, and we're going to do this pelvic tilt in a different way. So pelvic tilts are just tucking your tailbone under and bringing it back, under and back. Everybody else, I'm going to take you down to the floor, face down, reverse skydiver. This one is a godsend to those of you who are uh, like me with a flattening lower back. So you're gonna place your palms, uh, your fists into the floor. Anybody who's got an anterior tilt, I suggest laying on your back, maybe doing frog for a little while. So you're gonna put your palms into your, I keep saying palms, your fists into the ground. And my legs are straight back behind me. My elbows are in the air. This might be painful for you guys if you got a shoulder injury. If so, go ahead and lay in the frog position and relax. Everybody else, I want you to think like you're pushing your knees into the floor. And as you do that, your tailbone's gonna come up towards the sky. Because what we're doing is, remember those, those knee lifts that I showed you earlier? That's what we're doing. So we're trying to engage the hip flexors. It's similar to when we do the heel raises when we're sitting down. And we're thinking about lifting our knees up towards the sky. Same thing here, except the sky is facing the other way. So I want you to think like you're drawing your knees towards your chest. So this move should be coming from the front of your hip. It's not a move that's being engaged through your back muscles. And we're working on the main hip flexor, the iliopsoas. And this is a toughie because we have to push against the ground in order to do it. And the ground ain't going anywhere. So it causes our butt to lift up. And this is one of my favorite moves because if it's done correctly, it's working the hip flexor rather than the erector spinae. 
the erector spinae are the muscles all up and down your spine on your back. So I don't want those to engage. I want the front hip flexor to kick on. It's such a small movement. But while we're doing it, we're keeping our arms in this position that keeps our upper back in an extension to a degree. And our shoulder blades are back and down. Does everybody feel that? There's a few things going on here in reverse skydiver. I'll do maybe about 10, 15 more of these. I just caught myself using my back muscles to lift up. So I'm just going to take a little break, a little breath. And again, focus on my knees pushing into the floor. Push the knees into the floor. This is a good one. It's a tough one, too. I'm going to grab your pillow after this. I'm going to flip you over, and we're going to do knee pillow squeezes. Let's do it in the hook line position. If you can't do that, you're just going to sit in a chair, and you're going to do your knee pillow squeezes there. Oh, shoulder feels different. You know what? Because it feels different, I'm going to test it again. So I'm just letting my mind go and I'm speaking to you what I'm thinking because I'm hoping that you'll also start a pattern like that. If you notice, hmm, something feels different. You want to test it. Okay. So that position for my shoulder was really helpful. I'm getting a little closer to the floor. Okay, hook line position. Just means my knees are bent, that's all. I'm going to put your pillow or your block in between your knees. You're going to squeeze and release. Even if you're sitting in a chair, you can get this done. How many of you notice on the first time that you squeeze the pillow that both of your hips pop? Kind of feels good. A little pop. Knee pillow squeeze is really simple, effective, yeah. Can even be challenging. I don't feel these where I normally feel them. It's like my quads are trying so hard to do the work. It should be inner thigh, but really what I wanna go for is the groin. You wanna feel this very isolated right in the groin area. Most of us aren't going to get that right off of the bat because we're stuck in some sort of compensation. So it might take 60 squeezes or more to get that. I might have to put you in a different leg position. So if you haven't tried different leg positions, you could try this in a static back position. You can try this with your feet trapped against the wall in this hip flexor abdominal position, which is super, super deep. I've even had these standing up, which is awkward, but it does work. All right, everybody, I'm gonna have you stand up. We're gonna to get to our invisible ropes or lines across the ground. We're gonna do front unders, side unders, do some stuff. We'll get back down, do some supermans if we have some time. So front unders, you're gonna pretend that there's a limbo pole in front of you, but instead of going backwards under it by bending our back, we're gonna duck underneath it. Now, when you do the ducking, I'm gonna show you straight up front. I am gonna go back and forth when I finally do it, but I'm gonna show you. I want you to keep your feet hip distance, best you can. We're gonna take a step forward and here's where the tough part comes in. You might or might not be able to do it. So it's down to you how deep you go. 
but I can drop my back knee to the floor. You might not be able to, maybe you are gonna duck like this today, your choice. So I'm gonna drop my back knee to the floor. I'm gonna sit my butt back. My butt's almost touching my heel. I'm gonna pretend I'm coming underneath, shift my weight to my front leg and stand up. From the side, looks like this. Pull this back and take my step. I can drop my knee. Maybe you won't do that today. You sit back, I'm coming underneath this rope. Imaginary, shift my weight to my front leg, come up. Try to go with your left leg one time, your right leg the other. One minute, go. Step. It's a very segmented move. And it's very imaginary. Very imaginary. I used to set up lines in class. I think I put all my belts together and we realized how tough it was when it wasn't imaginary. When you tried to avoid touching the line, it really turned on the challenge. Either way, just have fun. So if you can't do this exactly how I'm doing it, who cares? Who the heck am I? Who the heck am I? I'm a nobody. Get creative. Listen to your body. Good. We're going to go for side unders next. Same idea here. You want to stay in that frontal plane nice and clean. Try not to rotate. So no transverse planar movement. Stay square. Think like a jumping jack. Now the line is to our left or to our right. How I use my words is it's break it down, extend the leg, shift the weight, and stand back up. When you break it down, it's like a squat, that's all. When I extend the leg, I keep one side loaded. So the leg that does extend, it's very light, very light. I don't extend and shift, no, no, no. Keep the hip, knee, and ankle in line, extend, shift. Now my weight's on the other hip. This one's very light. Replace and stand up. We're going to go one minute. Doesn't matter if you screw it up or it doesn't matter. Just do something. When you segment it this way, it starts to break down the muscles into, hmm, let's say, recruitable components. <laughs> and that's what we're going for. We're kind of retraining them. Try to keep your feet parallel as well. Go as low as you can with your hips. This is about retraining your hips to load. Low as you can with, oh, that feels so good. What a good stretch. Just wanna stay there for a little while. Mm. Oh, our minute's up, really? Okay, our minute's up. I'm gonna take you back down to the floor. We're gonna do Superman and Starfish. Not easy. So Superman is just like it sounds. So your arms are gonna be straight ahead, but we're gonna use the back, your butt, your hamstrings, everything to lift up off the ground. Starfish is gonna look like this open jumping jack. We're gonna come into this position and lift up off the ground. If you can't do that, maybe you're gonna lay over a chair. Drape yourself over a chair and get it done. That's possible, but it is back exercise. So either you skip this one and just hang out a moment or you try it on a chair. So I'm gonna give you a minute. We're gonna go back and forth between Superman and starfish. So each one, we're gonna try to lift. Keep your elbows straight, try to keep your knees straight, and you lift up. Superman, and then the arms and legs come out. Starfish, back and forth. Just one minute. Again, if you're having a hard time getting on the floor and you're not willing to maybe drape over a chair or a couch or a bed to do this, then just wait a minute. It is challenging. 
and it's tough and this is not for everybody. Ooh, that starfish feels good. Everybody feel that in your butt when you do the starfish? Woo that is a butt move. That is a butt move. And time, fantastic. I'm gonna, I just had it in my mind where I was gonna take you next and it just went right out. Oh, we don't have too much time. Let's do it. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna take you guys into static extension position. It's not for everybody. So if this hurts your back when you do static extension position, then you can lay on your back and do frog again, do frog pullovers. But I'm gonna take you into a position where we're gonna work with chest openers. So chest openers looks like so. Wonderful, I see someone doing a windmill already. Chest openers is like so. It's about your elbow creases. So we're gonna turn them in and out, in and out. But we're gonna do it with your shoulders back and down. So you're gonna be in and out, in and out. It's tough, it's tough to do. If you don't wanna do this on the floor on hands and knees, you could certainly stand up Put your hands against the wall, drop in, same thing, in and out. The wall can be your floor. So I'm gonna do it in static extension position because it's harder. Do it for about a minute. So hands and knees, I'm gonna move my hands maybe six inches forward. Shoulders are back over my wrists. Drop in, in and out, in and out. This is tough because your shoulders are under an enormous amount of load. It's easier to do on the wall. And if you've got wrist problems or shoulder problems, I think doing it on the wall is a fine idea. Keep the elbows nice and straight. Back and forth, in and out, in and out. And time, fabulous. Let's do a standing move, everyone. All right, I'm gonna take you over to the wall. Put your heels on the wall or on your door. Remember, if you have a little different shape in your butt and it's pushing your butt off of the wall and you feel like you're gonna fall forward, make it so that your heels are underneath your hips. That's what we're going after here. Heels, knees, hips, and shoulders. That's why we're using the wall to trap you because the wall is usually flat and straight. But if you have a different shape in your body, we're not flat and straight. So I'm gonna stand here at the wall, nice and easy. Nice, easy one, vertical loading, and just stand. <clears throat> This is one of the moves in the, um, I think the second or third trimester series, but you put a roll underneath your lower back and a roll right behind your neck. Asking the body to vertically load appropriately, especially when you're pregnant, really important. Really important. We're gonna add some shoulder moves to the wall stuff here. Really easy stuff. Give another 10 seconds or so. <laughs> so just like we did on the floor and I asked you to retract your shoulder blades, we're gonna do that here as well. Try and squeeze your shoulder blades together, but remember it's not a motion through your spine. So I don't want you to start arching your back. Your body stays right where it was when you were relaxed. Just squeeze your shoulder blades together, hold them there, elevate both of your shoulders and depress both of your shoulders while they remain retracted. Up and down. 
That's it. And next week, I'm not going to see any of you because the library is holding its registration for the in-person hybrid classes. If you're not able to join me in person, we're also going to be broadcasting via, I almost said Telegram, it's not Telegram, <laughs> via Zoom as well. But you will have the opportunity to come to the library in person as well. So next Monday, there is no class. Registration is open for the hybrid. Get to see you guys in person, yay. Good, I like it, I like this one. A lot of crunching, a lot of cracking, what happens? All right, step away. I'm gonna take you into what's called a free squat because I'm not charging you anything for it. <laughs> and want you to think about keeping a nice S curve in the spine. Anybody who's got an anterior tilt and is like me where their back bends like a suitcase, don't think too hard about trying to arch your back. You want that to come from your hip and just keep your shoulders back. So my feet are hip distance is normal hip distance, I'm gonna put my arms straight out in front of me and just like we did on the floor, shoulder blades retracted. Now sit back into it. So I'm sitting in the chair that isn't there, but I'm not tucking under. It's a little bit different than what you do um, Utkatasana, chair pose in yoga, which is this tuck under to create an energetic banda. No, I want you to really keep S curve in spine which means hip flexor needs to kick on. You're gonna have a curve. Your pelvis should be coming forward into an anterior tilt in order to get this done. Try to keep your knees in line with your hips. If they love to dive out, maybe you gotta put a block in between them to remind both hips they need to face the knees forward. Good, free squat is done, no charge. Fantastic, got a couple minutes left if anybody has any questions. If not, I guess I'll see you in two weeks.